What we're going to be going over here is a deferred tax asset where it has a previous amount set up in its valuation account here. Now this valuation account is set up where it, where it's more if it's more likely than not or greater than a 50% chance that you will not realize some portion or all of the deferred tax asset here. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to have this valuation account here. We're going to start out with a beginning balance and then we're going to have to adjust this valuation account to, depending on what we we're going to realize here in this deferred tax asset. So let's go down and let's look at our example here. And we'll just look at it from our tax accounting basis. And we're going to be looking at two years here, year X1 here and year X2. And what we're going to start with here in year X1, we're going to have this temporary difference of 375000 Everything is in thousands of dollars here. And then uh, for year X2 here, this temporary difference is going to increase to $500,000. So let's look at what we're talking about with this temporary difference. Now this temporary difference, uh, looking at year X1 here, the 375,000, that's actually going to be a future deductible amount here. So for our tax accounting purposes, uh, we're, this is going to be, let's say, say some revenue that we're going to be including in our income here, be uh, income here before taxes here. So that's, we're going to be paying taxes on it now, but uh, in later years, it's going to reverse itself here and we're not going to really have to pay taxes on it because we prepaid them here in year X1. So first off for our uh, uh, temp uh, what is our uh, deferred tax asset here? So you start with your temporary difference here for the year here, 375000 And that would be, again, our future deductible amount here. Now, the uh, deferred tax asset, we're taking our future deductible amount times our future tax rate. So our tax rate in this case is we're going to just use it as 40% here for our taxes each year here. So what we would do here for our deferred tax asset uh, in year X1, 150000 That's simply taking the 375000 here to future deductible amount times the tax rate of 40% gives us the deferred tax asset of $150,000. Now we move over here into year X2 where this temporary difference actually increases from 375 to $500,000. So our that 500,000 is now our future deductible amount. You take it times the future tax rate here of 40% and that's going to give you a deferred tax asset of $200,000. Again, uh, deferred tax asset here, future deductible amount times the future tax rate. In this case, 500,000 here times the 40% tax rate gives us the deferred tax asset of $200,000. Now, we're going to be looking at, uh, also before we move on here for our, our valuation account, let's look at how we would calculate our income before taxes here. It's not given to us, but based on the fact here, our temporary differences here, and uh, our taxable income here. What we're given here in this example, we're going to have taxable income here of $850,000. And we're going to be looking at these two temporary differences here to determine what our income before taxes is or pre-tax income. And that's simply looking at it in this aspect here. You take X, that's our unknown here, the income before taxes. And then we would compare or uh, the difference here, our, look at our incremental difference here or our in originating difference for the year here for this temporary difference. It cre increases from 375 to 500,000. So looking at it in those, that respect here, you're going to come up with an incremental or originating difference here for the year X2 of $125,000. So X is X, our income before taxes is simple enough to figure out. All you take is X here plus the originating difference for the year here, 500,000 minus 375,000 is going to equal our taxable income here of 850,000. So just moving at doing your arithmetic here or your algebra here, you take the difference, 125,000 here, move it over to this side here in that of the equation. So that would reduce our 850,000 down to $725,000. So that's what X equals our income before taxes here, $725,000. Okay, so now let's go down. Okay, and the next thing we have to determine was our tax payable, our current tax expense for the year here. So for year X2, we just take our taxable income that we're given here of 850,000 times our tax rate of 40% is gonna give us our tax payable here of $340,000. So that's our current 
amount here of our tax. Okay, so let's go down here and let's look at how we record this here. So before we move into our uh, uh, allowance account or evaluation allowance account, let's just look at how we'd record here our tax expense here on our income statement for our year X2 here. We're looking at this year X2 here. So for your deferred tax asset, remember this is deferred tax asset is going to reduce your tax expense. So what we're going to have to do here for our year here, uh, we're going to have a total amount here of a deferred tax asset for year X2 here of $200,000. But we have to start with our beginning balance here of $150,000 here. That year X1 carries into year X2. So we have a beginning balance at the end of the, at the beginning of the year here, year X2 of $150,000. We need $200,000 our total amount, moving down here a total amount. So we need a net increase here of $50,000 in our deferred tax asset for it to increase from the uh, beginning balance here of $150,000 to uh, up to its ending amount here for the year here of $200,000. So that is what's going to re this $50,000 or this incremental amount is what's going to reduce our tax expense. So just looking at our tax expense is really a plug here between our tax payable and our deferred tax assets. So uh, our tax payable, we would have credited that here for $340,000 based on our taxable income here of $850,000 and our tax rate here of 40%. So credit your tax payable here for $340,000. And then you'd have a debit balance over here, or it's going to reduce your tax payable here uh, for this deferred tax asset of $50,000. So that or there it is. You subtract out your deferred tax asset from your tax payable here, and you're going to come up with your tax expense here of $290,000. So tax expense on your income statement, debit that here for $290,000. So you got your debits balance with your credit. Debit here at $290,000. Uh, which reduced your uh, tax expense based on your tax payable here. Debit that here for uh, that debit amount here of 50,000 uh, balances which are credit here in your tax payable here of 340,000. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at we're going to set up this deferred tax valuation allowance account here. Now, this is a contra account here. And what we're doing here with this uh, deferred allowance or valuation account here is we're going to be reducing our deferred tax asset. And also, it's going to affect our tax expense. So let's go down and look at it here. So again, contra account. Uh, opposite uh, credits and credits and debits are opposite here compared to the deferred tax asset. And what we're going to be looking at in our example here, for the beginning of the year here at UX2, we're going to have a deferred tax asset or a credit that's reducing our deferred tax here, or a deferred tax asset allowance account here, a credit of 40000 which is reducing our deferred tax asset here. Okay, so the deferred tax evaluation account here our allowance or reduction to our deferred tax asset here at the beginning balance is $40,000. So what this uh, uh, deferred tax asset valuation allowance account is doing is reducing the deferred tax asset to its realized amount. So uh, moving up here, let's just look at it. Our realized amount here at the end, a total for year X2 at the end of year X2 is $200,000. But because we have a beginning balance in our deferred tax our allowance account here, a reduction to our deferred tax asset of 40000 What we're actually getting is a realized amount of 160000 We can just go down and look at it here. So the valuation allowance is reduced, it reduces the deferred tax asset to its realized amount. We start out here at the, what 200000 is what we have for the year here. It's reduced by the beginning balance of 40000 So uh, starting out here, we have a 160000 here uh, balance in our deferred tax asset through the reduction here of this contra account for this valuation allowance account to our deferred tax asset. Okay, so now let's look at how this works here. Let's just say we're going to, let's just say our deferred tax asset here, this whole $200,000 is going to be fully realized here. We're going to just say we can fully realize it here. Even though we got this beginning balance here, we're going to fully realize it. So how, how would you have to, you're going to have to get rid of the uh, allowance of beginning amount here or credit here of $40,000. So what you want to do is just looking at it in these terms, your deferred tax asset fully realized, you take your valuation at the end of year X2, 
you should have zero in this here because you're going to fully realize the 200,000 sitting in your deferred tax asset and then you take your beginning balance here of 40,000 so what you're going to have here you're going to be looking from 40,000 here it's going to have to go down to 2,000 here this valuation uh, to zero here excuse me your deferred tax allowance account so you have a net decrease required here of $40,000 so go into your deferred tax asset or your valuation account and debit that here for $40,000 because you're going to realize the total 200,000 here in your deferred tax asset so that becomes your deferred tax asset allowance account here is essentially reduced to zero here in our first case that we're looking at here and then the balancing amount or the balancing entry for your debit here or your reduction in deferred tax asset of forty thousand goes to your tax expense here on your income statement i i broke it out here you had your tax expense that we calculated up above but i broke it out here just so you can see how it works so for case one here you would credit your tax expense or reduce your tax expense here for forty thousand dollars on your income statement that's based on the fact that your deferred tax allowance account here was reduced uh, by forty thousand dollars and if you go back and look at your tax expense here what that's going to do let's just go look at it say we had a debit here of two hundred ninety thousand here in our tax expense account but with the uh, broken out here with the reduction of that of uh, $40,000 of tax expense you're ult ultimately getting down to your tax expense here in case one of $250,000 so getting rid of your deferred tax or what you've done here by getting rid of your deferred tax your valuation account here reducing it to zero you increased your deferred tax asset here uh, by that forty thousand dollars amount here so what it did essentially is it reduced your tax expense by forty thousand from two hundred ninety thousand down to fifty thousand now let's go down and let's look at the other case here let's just say our deferred tax asset none would be realized here so uh, we're sitting here with two hundred thousand here and our deferred tax asset and when we had a beginning balance of forty thousand here but we're saying that none of this the two hundred thousand dollars of deferred tax asset would be realized so again just go down to your comparison here you take your valuation at the end of the year here year x2 that's we're going to come up with two hundred thousand dollars so that this is where none of this we want to get rid of all this deferred tax asset sitting here uh, in our asset account here we want to get it down to zero so what we would do here is you're going to take your valuation account you have to get that uh, to two hundred thousand dollars you have to increase it to the total amount of two hundred thousand you're already sitting at your beginning amount here of forty thousand so what you're going to need is a net increase required here of 160,000. So sitting with a beginning balance 40,000, value at the end here at 200,000, so you have the increase here of 160,000. So this is where zero of this deferred tax assets going to be realized here. That's for case 2. Remember, we started with our credit amount here of 40,000. We have to get rid of the entire 200,000 here in because it's not going to be realized that deferred tax asset so all we're doing is adding up we have to increase it by 160,000 so we got total amount here uh, 40,000 plus 160,000 credit here that equals 200,000 in in that credit here reduces your debit or your amount here in your deferred tax asset of 200,000 so deferred tax asset none realized so when you're working with this and trying to figure out what goes into your valuation account here just remember what you what you're going to what you have to get what you have to realize so all you're going to do is take uh, whatever your ending amount is here compare it to the beginning amount in your deferred tax or your valuation account here and determine if you need a net increase or decrease here and you have to adjust that deferred tax asset account appropriately here but let's just look at case two here the uh, credit we had to increase that to 160,000 because none of the 200,000 in your deferred tax assets going to be realized and what we would do okay and we increased it here because that would increase our deferred tax allowance uh, to a total amount here of 200,000 but for looking at the case here where we had to look at the credit here of increasing our deferred tax asset allowance account here we need to go and we have to have our tax expense 
we have to look at the case here where we have a debit amount here has to go to tax expense on our income statement of 160,000. So credit here, 160,000, then you would get a debit here, your tax expense here, uh, increase that by 160,000. Because what you've essentially done is you've wiped out your deferred tax asset here by, or reduced it by 160,000, and you can't use the full amount here. Uh, well, you get, you're gonna have increased your allowance here uh, by 160,000. In that case, it's gonna increase your tax expense here by 160,000 because you're not gonna be able to use that $160,000 worth of your deferred tax assets. So what it is essentially done here, your total tax expense, you were sitting here with 290,000 here in your tax expense, but you had to increase it by 160,000 here. So ultimately, your tax expense goes up to 450,000 here because you no longer have any deferred tax asset here. You uh, got rid of all of it. There would, none of the deferred tax asset would be realized. And again, remember here, all our numbers here are based on the end of year X2 for both cases here, case one here and case two. Case one again is where the deferred tax asset was fully realized. That is, we have this 200,000 here that was fully realized, but we had originally a beginning balance of 40,000. So what we had to do is we had to get uh, eliminate this allowance account here, 40,000. Uh, we had a credit here, 40,000, so we would debit it out here for 40,000. And then the second case here is the deferred tax asset. None of it was realized here. And so we had the credit here of 40,000 already. So we had to increase it by the difference between our value, uh, we had to bring up our valuation here, our valuation account to 200,000, beginning balance 40,000, so we had to increase it here by 160,000. So you let's see what's going on here. If you have a reduction in your deferred tax asset account here, uh, you would debit that here, and then you're gonna have a credit, or you're gonna be reducing your tax expense here by that amount. So in that reduction in your deferred tax allowance account is going to give you a reduction in your tax expense here. And the increase in your tax account, in this case, a credit here in your tax account, is going to increase your tax expense. Okay, so that'll just take us through our example here where we had to deal with uh, setting up this deferred tax allowance account and we had a beginning balance and you had to adjust that beginning balance depending on our deferred, uh, your allow, de allowance here or your, or your allowance account to your deferred tax asset. It had to be adjusted based on what you were going to realize here. And we looked at the case here where you're gonna fully realize your deferred tax asset account here versus your uh, not realizing any of them. But and if you look at it from the beginning perspective here, we were uh, gonna realize uh, 160,000. And we started out with 160,000 because we, we had a deferred tax asset here at the end of year X2 of 200,000, but we had set up our deferred tax allowance account. We said that 40,000 of it would not be realized. We expected that in the future 40,000 wouldn't be realized. So that ultimately reduced our deferred tax asset down to 160,000. Okay, so that takes care of our deferred tax asset account here where we had to set up this valuation allowance account here. And the valuation allowance account here affected our tax expense. Just remember what's shown here, our tax expense, I broke it out here. What we started out with our tax expense based on our taxes payable and what we had here for a net increase here for in our deferred tax asset for the year here resulted in our tax expense. But then that, that tax expense here was either increased or decreased depending on the uh, valuation that we uh, account that we set up here for that deferred tax asset account. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.